creatures of the night it's your girl tati let's talk about the go home show for wrestle dream we had title tuesday for dynamite yes dynamite was on tuesday instead of airing tomorrow i am i have well as usual i'm going to be honest as much as i love aw this was very underwhelming this is a go home show i know there's rampage right i don't believe that there is going to be a collision this week since the pay-per-view will be on saturday so this year this is the company's last ditch effort especially on their biggest show the show that get the most um uh, viewership to try to um you know get people to spend a little fifty dollars on this pay-per-view you know they got the deal on max but that's not going to help us with wrestle dream so um you know this was an opportunity to try to put their best um on this show and honestly there were some hit and misses for me um we did start off with john moxley who is basically saying that um brian has been trying to kill himself for the past two years and he goes brian don't kill yourself let me do it let me be the one to kill you and i found it interesting that he went on to say that he hopes that one day brian understands that it had to be this way and i was just like okay and he goes well the stakes are just too high right now and i'm like oh well what, what what does that mean to be honest every time i'm hearing these promos that crazy music in the background while he's talking i just love the way it feels however i hear you bro but what but what are you saying you know what i mean whatever the payoff is with this whole storyline so far i'm just like i'm just waiting to see where it goes i'm just not really sure um what to expect at this point now um since taz had his surgery today and won't be on commentary for quite some time we do have jeff jarrett on commentary today i don't know if he's going to be replacing him from now on we'll see after this darby allen came on and um he was calling out brody king brody king comes out and darby allen this is the heel turn y'all this is the heel turn for me i don't know about everybody else Darby Allen goes on to say how he's done all these great things for Brody. Um, oh, I got you your job. I'm the reason why your daddy retired and all these things. This is one of those things where it's just like when you do something good for somebody and you rub it in their faces. And I'm just like, why are you doing that? You the one who put an open challenge out there and you're mad that Brody King, the person who's been beefing with you for, for since like the moment he got into this company and you're upset about it which is so weird to me now they do get into a little scuffle and what was interesting was that darby while into the scuffle he puts his hand in his little pink jacket took out a, a rock from that little um junkyard that he was at the other day and he hit brody um in the hand with it which is the hand i think that was broken um earlier this year and then he also hits him right across the face and before shit could really pop off the use of security guards came out and actually did their jobs and kept them away from each other and then the crowd is booing talking about let them fight let them fight and i'm just like wait a minute y'all y'all booing because y'all wanted to keep fighting but y'all not booing darby for what he just did he practically just turned heel just now am i the only one who just seen this very interesting um to be honest i'm a little underwhelmed about this whole thing with the open challenge thing um it is what it is now after we have jake the snake roberts who's back there uh renee paquette uncle don lance archer uncle don was like well we we, we have successfully completed the first um manager to manager transaction whatever the hell that whatever he said um basically jake has given uncle don and the family lance archer and Uncle Don has made a trade too, but um, Jake is not willing to say what it was. He said that if you like surprises, wait until y'all see what a surprise is. Good. Now, after this, Renee is still busy because Daniel Garcia done walked up in the building and he said he has something to say and he wanted to say it in front of the fans because the fans deserve to know what it is uh, that's going on with him. Great. After this, though we had a really great match really awesome finally after what seemed like forever of talking and everything other than wrestling we finally had hologram for the kids um versus commander i give commander and hologram some shit sometimes but man th these guys are fucking talented i love it 
um, a really great high energy match. I think after all the talking and everything, this has really gotten people, especially in the crowd, to get their ass up and feel energized about the rest of the show. Um, Hologram has had his, what, I think he was on his 13th um, win so far. And Commander, you know, he's he's employed and whatever's going on with him. Um, really, really great match. And honestly, I thought they faced each other before, at least on Collision or something, but I guess not. Um, definitely, if you didn't see anything else, this match I think is worth watching. There was some hiccups here and there, but I don't expect these matches to be perfect. I do feel like they had a really great chemistry. Their styles are similar yet different at the same time my only complaint about these two guys is is something i complain about with other luchadors too is that they the personality is just not there it's not there whether if it's in the ring or outside of the ring and unfortunately it's almost like as if that we have that mask on and and then that's it there's nothing other than that we have a mask on and we're really talented in the ring there has to be more especially since hologram ends up taking this win his 14th straight win since he's been in the company and yet he's being touted for the kids and to be honest even the kids want to see a character with personality and honestly i'm not getting that at all now these two guys are baby faces they don't got no problem with each other this whole thing was for hispanic characters month and then here comes Jake the Snake Roberts who come out there um he's standing on the stage and he's just staring and I'm just like oh Jake what what, what, what you doing over here are you recruiting hologram or, or, or commander being your group but then here comes Roosh Drillistico and my boy oh my god um Beast Martos and I'm gonna say this while I'm at it because the whole time Excalibur goes they go Black Martos they go Black Martos I'm like bitch his name is Beast Martos do you not watch the motherfucking show Excalibur let me not get into it let me not get into it um uh, but he kept saying that the whole time which was just killing the vibe for me now they end up putting the pause on uh uh on, on commander and uh hologram you know you in the wrong place wrong time type of situation whatever and, um, you know, they do that fist thing when they put their fists up in the air and then they join their fists together and all that stuff or whatever. Damn, that sounds like something else is going on. Um, and Jalisco and Roosh does it. And then here comes Beast Martos, who looks like he's thinking about it because all these groups have been fighting over um, uh, Beast Martos lately. And, and honestly, I will fight for you too, Poppy. I will fight for you too, Beast Martos. But Beast Martos ends up joining LFI. And somehow, some way, for whatever reason, um, Uncle Jake is the the manager of this group. I never thought this is what we were doing. Um, yeah, I don't want to judge the situation, but I'm just gonna see where this goes. All right. So after this, we have Mark Briscoe. Pastor Briscoe look high as fuck. Okay, high as fuck. And even somebody has shouted that out in the audience. If you watch that. Um, back, you can hear someone say, Yo, you high as fuck. Shut it out really loud. Um, long story short, Mark Briscoe was just like, Oh, you know, for you mentioning my brother, they're saying about the uh, world title. Um, this is about me hurting you. And Pastor Briscoe, please, please hurt Chris Jericho. Put him out of commission. I don't care for how long it is. Just, I just don't want to see him on every motherfucking show anymore. After this, Daniel Garcia, he comes on out there. And he is doing that thing. Y'all know how that is. They want to keep the suspense going. So they're talking in, in circles. And, and really, it's just like, just spit it out, bro. What the fuck are you here for? Basically, what he said is that he ain't going no motherfucking where. He is here to stay at AEW with the best wrestle. It took like five, six, seven minutes for him to get there. But he said it. He let in all the dirt sheets and everybody know that he ain't going nowhere he's staying in AEW and then if if I were you anybody with a title y'all better be on the lookout because I'm here to win championships and that's what I want to hear Daniel Garcia I want that that attitude to to go on to getting some title or, or whatever maybe maybe at some point against Jackson Perry um we'll see after this there's a video package showing about Swerve and he's been training since his um, last match at, uh, what was it, All Out? 
Um, and then, you know, the whole MVP, Shelton Benjamin and, and Prince Nana, this whole thing. Whoever put this video together, it was really, really nice. And seeing EJ and Duca and Swerve at the gym working out, that was for me, Tony Khan. I know that was directly for me and, and to make me feel better. And um, I really enjoyed how this went. They went on to let us know that Swerve will be at Wrestle Dream. We will hear from Swerve. So that's going to be interesting. We'll see what happens with that. Uh, Mercedes Monet was on after this doing her little interview and then Renee Paquette introduced her as if she's like she's speaking like a um, uh, CEO and CEO is like she's like wait Renee would you just stick to your day job don't be mimicking me like you're not doing a good job at it um, she's basically letting everyone know she's gonna whoop Amy Sakura's ass and that everybody should jump on the Monet train especially Chris Statlander now, Danny Garcia is parading back there, hugging all his friends, his mama, and, and, and the dogs, and everything, all happy about being back. And Anna Jay was over there, too. And this is, I have to mention this because Shibata comes over there with his translator. And then he goes, oh, that he's going to be going for the TNT title this weekend, and he's going to whoop Jackson Perry ass and become champion. And um, that was interesting because if you, if you look in the background, you see Anna Jay like, what? What? You gonna be who? I thought that was funny. If you really pay attention, you'll see that. Um, I think, um, insinuate that, you know, Shibata would give someone like Daniel Garcia a, a title shot if he were to win that title. Um, but we'll see about that. Now, um, up next we have Willow Nightingale. Willow Nightingale is supposed to go against DMD. DMD is so sick, she can't even leave the house, which has me speculating that she have COVID again. Um, which is interesting because apparently they announced that earlier during the day, but I didn't hear about it some sometime on social media. I, I got a life. I'm not sitting here on Twitter all day. Um, so Willow Nightingale went against Soraya, Jamie Hayter, and Nyla Rose, all um, past champions, uh, women's champions, which I thought was interesting. You know, giving the girls something to do on TV, that's great. Having a second women's match on the show, that's great. However, they could have literally just gave Willow Nightingale the fucking title shot since DMD just couldn't be there. I get the whole thing. Now, um, long story short, Willow does end up taking the win, which was like so predictable. We're happy for our girl, but damn, can we stop making things so predictable? I'm not gonna lie. Jamie Hader being in this, I kind of was just like, oh, Willow, I love you, girl, but Jamie, I would like to see Jamie win this. Now, throughout this whole motherfucking match, Soraya and, and Harley Cameron tag teaming and, and just getting into the whole thing, and to be honest, I felt like it was pretty ex excessive in terms of Harley Cameron's um involvement in this match so I, I something about it brought it down for me a little bit when really all four of these girls could have had a pretty solid match and it just felt like way too much interference from um Harley Cameron ringside now towards the end of the match we had somebody who interfered which was Penelope Penelope Ford we haven't seen you in the longest girl where you been she attacked Jamie Hayter I don't really remember if there was anything between those two at least in the past, that would make me think, oh, okay, yeah, I can see why Jamie, uh, I'm sorry, Penelope would attack Jamie. I honestly can't think of it. Whatever the situation was, Jamie was so preoccupied with that that she went to the back with Penelope and the rest of the three girls. Well, should I say four? Because Harley Cameron was all up in this, ended up um, getting involved. Willow ended up pinning Serena and Harley Cameron, who's not even in the motherfucking match. And um, that was it. Now, Willow is making her way towards the stage. Mariah May ends up giving her a headbutt dead in the face and um, Willow ends up falling down. Now a little bit later, Mariah is doing her little interview and Willow came out of the blue and gave her a pounce and just pretty much threw her across the room and she's letting everyone know, especially Mariah May, that hey, I just went against four past, I mean three past um, AEW Women's Champions. However, Mariah this weekend, you're going to be a former AEW Women's Champion as well. And I felt that. I felt like she meant that. And, um, you know, we'll, we'll see what ends up happening with that. Unfortunately, with the track record with Willow Nightingale, it's not looking good. It's not looking good. After this, the learning treat. Uh, Chris Jericho and them glitter pants. Oh, my motherfucking God. What are we doing? It's an eyesore. Now, the whole learning tree group. They went and stopped Rocky Romero, who's sitting back there by his lonesome when he's supposed to be part of the conglomeration. 
and basically saying, hey, we're not here to whoop your ass. We're just here to give you a, a learning moment here. Basically saying, um, you part of the conglomeration because they gave you a shirt that you're not even on. And to be honest, that made me chuckle because I was like, well, y'all yeah, right about that. Um, long story short, they're just pretty much trying to get into Rocky's head about being part of that group. And that he's just a lackey of, of the conglomeration, which could maybe be true. I don't know. Um, long story short, Big Bill goes on to say, oh, you're in the picture, so you can't see the big picture when it comes to the conglomeration. And um, they end up leaving. I don't know where that's going, but great. Jay White gives us a squash match with somebody, some dude named Cody Chun, who has two H's in his name, which I don't even understand what that's supposed to mean. Um, this was over in like less than two minutes. Uh, Jay White gets on the mic and tells um hangman adam page that he wants to fight him at wrestle dream and long story short they done put up the graphics for hangman versus jay white at wrestle dream and no tony khan we didn't want this we didn't want this at wrestle dream barely any build in terms of what's happened between the two of them solely in aew in the past what not even two weeks and it just feels like way too soon now if y'all would have pushed this on to full gear or something then yes i would have been happy about it but for wrestle dream this saturday uh, uh way too soon now hook is back there who's crying about oh i've been looking for you whoever it was that attacked my daddy how are you looking for somebody that you have no clue who it was? Like, what are you doing? You're just pushing people and saying, hey, did you attack my dad? Did you attack my dad? You have no clue who it was, but you've been looking for somebody? Weird. Now, while he's doing all that talking and looks like he just robbed somebody's house with that hoodie and beanie on, here comes uh, Kip Sapien bumping into Hook. Now, Hook done snatched him up and said, was that you that attacked my daddy? And he goes, no, he's just trying to run away from somebody. Then he ends up running off, and then we see that he's been running away from our stepdaddy. Now, our stepdaddy was like, hey, we're both family men, Hook. You know, I lost my son, uh, kill switch to illness, and you just lost your daddy. And then I was just like, hmm, this is something interesting here. I've been hearing people say that it could have been Christian that attacked um, Taz, even though I can give two shits about Taz getting attacked. Um, it would be interesting to see where this whole thing goes. I would personally love to sit front row to see Nick Wayne school Hook and teach him how to wrestle and whoop his ass if that's the case. But, you know, we'll see what happens with that. After this, we do have Mercedes Monet versus Amy Sakura. She actually has both titles on the line. So there you go, you guys. Two titles on the line in one match. Tony Khan said, here, here, here's your title Tuesday. Now, um, the match I thought was good, but it was just like, eh, at this point, I'm kind of overwhelmed and feeling like a lot has been thrown at us throughout this whole show. Uh, you know, Mercedes ends up retaining both titles um, via submission with the bank statement. And they end up, her and Camille end up attacking our queen, our highness, Emmy. And then here comes Statlander come with the save um, to save um, Emmy. And honestly, I'm enjoying this whole thing with all of these girls. I would love to see Statlander win the TBS title again. Um, will that happen? Probably not. Now we have Stokely Hathaway back there who is trying to get Private Party to be under his um management private party long story short was just like what the fuck now that we get entitled opportunities you popping up while we're getting hot and where were you the past five years that we've been up in this company trying to make a name for ourselves and they said no to stoutly now stoutly doesn't seem to be upset but it seems like as if maybe he have other plans. There are other options in terms of teams. But what if he ends up getting involved with them possibly losing at Wrestle Dream? I don't even want to think about it. I don't even want to think about it. So now we have Shivani in the ring with William. And William calls out Uncle Don and asking him, Did you send to catch to whoop my ass um, during my match with Ricochet? Now, Uncle Don is dancing around the question. He is talking about everything under the sun other than answering the damn question. Talking about, oh, you and I, we won so many matches together. We even took out uh, Kenny Omega and threw him like the trash that he is. And I'm just like, wait a minute, well, which trash can did you throw Kenny Omega in so I can go get him? 
Now, uh, Uncle Don finally ends up answering the question and said, yes, I did send Sakesha to whoop your ass. And, you know, Ricochet was in the wrong place at the wrong time. So that was what it was on that. And then they end up getting into it physically after, yes, Uncle Don did hit bruv first. But William, how do you feel like putting your hands on Uncle Don? Uncle Don is like 60 years old and you're over here hitting him. Like, how do you feel about putting your hands on, 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 on elders? Now... Uh, while that's happening, uh, we do have Takeshita who ends up coming out. We do have uh, Kyle Fletcher who come out there looking like he's in a 90s boy band. And Takeshita is having no problem putting his hands on William. But Kyle Fletcher is just like, what the fuck is happening here? Now, they even got to the point where Uncle Don gives Kyle Fletcher a screwdriver and tells him to take out uh, William. Now, he doesn't want to do that. Him, He and William are just like besties or whatever. He doesn't want to hurt him. So she ends up throwing the uh, screwdriver because he doesn't want to get physical with him and ends up walking away. Rather than really helping to make sure that this whole thing stops, he ends up walking away. And then it took Ricochet to come out with them bright ass sneakers to come help William, which is very interesting because I know William is going to watch this whole thing back and be like, Kyle, what, 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 what the fuck? Why did you just leave instead of making sure that Takeshita stopped putting his hands on me? Interesting development. We'll see what ends up happening with that. Now, Action and Dreddy top flight and them, they're over there fighting, um, arguing back there. Um, they're basically saying that Action and Dreddy is a problem in the group. And um, Dante Martin is just like, you know, we need to fix this. Layla Gray was like, we didn't have no problems till you showed up. Now, they end up walking away and Darius Martin is just standing in the middle, just like so sad because he was the one who brought over Action and Dreddy into the group because Dante had broke that little ankle. And they needed somebody, well, he needed somebody at the time to tag with. And now Action and Dreddy is being all crazy. Um, and I guess he feels some type of way about that. After this, Jackson Perry is letting everybody know he's going to whoop Shibata's ass at the pay-per-view. I don't know if he's going to whoop his ass, but will he retain a title? I can totally see that. Now, finally, main event, Danielson teaming up with our boy Willa Yuta um, versus Claudio and Pac. Uh, we had like literally like about 10 minutes up of the show before we finally got this main event going. And um, I thought it was I thought it was decent. It was good. Um, but the thing is, is that you're just lurking, just like, okay, where's Moxley? Where's Marina? I know y'all gonna come out here and, and get into shenanigans. And, um, long story short, they are ringside, um, towards the end of the match. And Marina is a distraction for the referee. I guess she's so beautiful that he's so distracted by her. Um, but that does not keep Pac from, uh, tapping, uh, from our boy Danielson. Now, after this... They end up um, getting attacked, and um, the crazy thing about it was that Danielson, he runs up to Moxley, and they're taking the fight way to the back. Meanwhile, <clears throat> Wheeler Yuta's getting his ass whooped by Marina Shafir, and then Claudia's whooping his ass, and then um, Pac is whooping his ass. They have the, um, what's that thing, the, the thing that they use, the, the hammer, they have the hammer for the, the, uh, the timekeeper belt. Um, Bell and they are hitting him repeatedly in the stomach, repeatedly in the stomach. Meanwhile, Danielson and Moxley in the back fighting, and then they end up bringing that fight back to the ring, which kind of felt a little bit odd because I was just like, "Oh, are you fighting Moxley back there? It's just you guys, but then you know you're going to come back to the ring and you're going to be ambushed by everyone else who was fighting against you." Now, what ends up happening is Danielson somehow, with the spirit of John Cena, ends up taking out everybody well except for marina obviously and then he goes out in the middle of the the ring and he's doing the yes chance and the whole crowd is yes yes and he and the craziest thing is happening at the same time wheeler yuda is barely clinging to life holding on his stomach reaching out for danielson for danielson to help him danielson don't even realize wheeler yuda is near death right behind him because he's so into this yes chant even when he stops for a moment he gets right back to it and you can just see willie yuda is just like bitch help me i'm dying here oh my god it was so fucking hilarious um yes he does help him out at some point uh when he realized that willie yuda is still in the ring and that's how the show ends it could have been a stronger go home show tony khan you already got my money i already bought wrestle dream but for other people 
they might not feel interested after seeing a show like this. A lot of things feel um, last second or they just don't feel like the build to it um, it is that great. Like there's stories to be told. I do feel like throughout the show they gave us a lot but you can see that there are, there are some stories here but when you put in a story um, like last second people want those things to have time to play out and build and 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 unfortunately a lot of these things feel like they just happened so some people are definitely not necessarily feeling um wrestle dream is kind of feeling more like a nightmare at this point but we'll see what ends up happening on saturday guys thanks so much for watching my review i will be back on thursday for ring of honor I'll see you guys then bye